Hey guys, it's Mitch. It's been a while since my last video, and I know I've gotten a lot of people asking me about tuning the Futaba servos ever since my GYD 550 video. I finally picked myself up a brand new CD700 servo to replace this older CT700 that I've been using for a little bit now in my Team Drift Pigeons PE 1.1. The CD700 is supposed to be Futaba's drift specific servo compared to the CT700, 701, and 702. It's a little bit faster with a little less torque, but today I'm gonna to be going over how you can get all that stuff adjusted to your liking, as well as going over install and the capabilities of these powerful and popular servos on the RC drift scene. So sit back, listen up, and let's get started. So the first thing we should know when thinking about going the Futaba servo route is in order to get the full potential out of these servos, you're gonna to wanna to be using a 4 p.m. 7px or 10px which is my remote here and a gyd 550 gyro i haven't tested the older 4px and 4pv models i know they do have capabilities for adjusting s bus servo parameters however only the 4pm 7px and 10px have more recent updates for compatibility with futaba's newer surface s bus servos you'll also want to make sure your remote is updated at least to the latest version that supports the servo you're using I'll post the link to the Futaba transmitter updates down in the description and the update process I covered in my AccuVance update video. The latest updates for the 4PM, 7PX, and 10PX will support up to the CT501, which will be the newest servo used in the RC drift scene. The SBUS tunable servos used for drifting would include the CT500, CT501, CD700, CT700, CT701, and CT702. There are also some lower end programmable Futaba servos, but I won't get into those. Most people buying a new Futaba servo for drifting right now will probably opt for the CT501, CT701 or 702 or the CD700, which is what I have here. I have my GYD 550 here, so now I'll show you how to plug everything in. I'm gonna plug my servo into SX on the 550. The great thing about using the Futaba stuff with each other is the Futaba plugs are keyed here so they only go in one way. RX goes to channel one on the receiver and GN goes to channel three. With the wires this way, I can wirelessly edit my servo settings through my remote. If you have your 550 running through SBUS on the receiver, you will not be able to wirelessly read and write the servo settings. So when using the Futaba servo setups, I choose to run my GYD 550 through channel one and three. As mentioned in my GYD 550 video, you'll want to be using an R334 or R404 receiver to be able to wirelessly read and write the servo settings. So now that we have install and wiring covered, we can get into adjusting some stuff. To connect to the servo, I'm gonna go to the SBUS servo menu. This is SBUS SX on the 4PM. I'm gonna hit read and then wireless for channel one. And then this should bring up all these settings here. First we have dead band. Dead band control is how responsive the servo is to small inputs of the steering wheel. The lower the dead band, the more responsive it is to small inputs. The larger the dead band, the more input you can use before the servo starts moving. These settings explanations from Futaba can actually be found in the user manual for your remote if you haven't read that yet. The lowest dead band setting you can use is zero and the highest is 3.98. Although these minimum and maximum values may vary between different servos, I'm just going off this CD700. Next we have damper. Damper is gonna be pretty important for drifting and one of the more often adjusted values on the servo. The damper affects the hunting or gyro wobble and is most easily explained as a break for the servo. Typically raising the damper is used to suppress hunting but will slow the servo speed down. Lower the damper to increase overall servo speed and response but watch for any shaking in the front wheels. Damper can be adjusted down to zero and all the way up to 255. The next setting down the list is smoother. The smoother as you might think controls how smooth the operation of the servo is. A servo is basically a motor, so think of the smoother as a drive frequency for the motor. Turning smoother off is like lowering the drive frequency and making the operation of the servo quicker but rougher. Turning smoother on is like having a higher drive frequency and increasing the steps it takes for the servo to move, making it smoother. For drifting, smoother is usually left on. 
mine is always on for my servo for drifting. For this Futaba stuff, ACT will mean on and INH will mean off. Next we have stretcher. This is also an important setting for drifting. Stretcher is your servo torque and holding strength. Turn up for more torque, down for less torque. Stretcher can also affect hunting and usually a lower stretcher will decrease the chance of hunting. This is a personal preference setting based on how you want your car to handle and drive, but it is worth mentioning that if your damper and stretcher are set too high, your servo will heat up. I have seen and heard about many people heating their Futaba servos up incredibly hot from having incorrect settings and that can cause damage just like any electronic part so you want to make sure your settings are at a point where the servo is staying relatively cool to the touch. The lowest setting is 0.125 and the highest setting is 8 but I usually leave stretcher under 3. And then we have boost. Boost can be considered as an initial start speed for the servo. Turn boost to ACT and up for a faster initial speed to the servo. Turn it down or to INH for a slower initial speed. This probably is one of the least adjusted values for me, but you can play around with it if you'd like. I usually leave mine off. The lowest setting is three and the highest setting is 45. Lastly, for the first page of settings, we have the servo mode setting up here. This is for putting your servo in the normal mode or SR or super response mode. I did notice on some CD700s they can jitter a bit in normal mode where they won't as much or at all in SR mode. So if you're having hunting problems and you really can't figure out what it is after messing with all the settings, try putting your servo and gyro into SR mode to see if that fixes your problem. To do this, simply plug your servo into the COM port on the back of your remote. Go to your S bus servo settings and read through the communication port. Now we can hit the mode setting and switch to SR mode. We also have frequency up here, but this isn't an adjustable value and I haven't really figured out what it's supposed to be for. When we change the servo to SR mode, we have three types. Type 1 keeps the frequency at 3, Type 2 changes the frequency to 4, and Type 3 changes the frequency to 5. Again, I'm not too sure what this change in frequency does, whether it's the motor frequency or something else, but each type does have different base servo settings, and switching from each type will reset the servo settings, so you can't use these to save different servo setting profiles, unfortunately. Now we're going to move on to the second page. The first setting we have up here is channel. This is used for when the servo is plugged into an S-Bus hub to the receiver to assign the servo to a specific use channel. I think this is mainly used for the aircraft stuff, and I think the way we wire these up for drifting will bypass the setting anyway, so you can just leave this at channel one. The reverse setting can be used to reverse the turning direction of the servo. Some setups will require you to reverse channel one to get the servo turning in the right direction. With this setting, you can reverse the turning direction directly in the servo settings instead of reversing your channel one. Either way will work though. Soft start, I haven't really messed with too much. I don't have much of an explanation for this setting. Here's what Futaba states about it. From a little bit of testing, what I can interpret it as is it seems like a damper point adjustment in the servo itself. You might want to play around with this setting yourself. It starts off at 12 and goes down to 0 0.8. This neutral setting adjusts the overall center point of the servo separate from trim and sub trim, but it seems like it actually works just like sub trim. If you have to adjust neutral far to one side, you will lose travel on the other side of the servo, so it's best to put your servo horn on as straight as you can to begin with and adjust the rest straight with trim. You can adjust the neutral up to plus or minus 30. Stop mode is basically a fail safe. When set to hold, the servo will hold its last position if the signal from the transmitter is ever lost. Free should be off. Not really necessary for drifting, so another setting I just leave off. Speed is pretty self-explanatory. This is just the overall servo speed. 
On the Futaba servos, the higher the number, the slower the servo speed. The slowest is 12. The lower the number, the faster the servo speed. The fastest is 0.047. INH will keep the full speed of the servo. Typically, the Futaba servos are a bit on the fast side. You could always experiment with turning the servo speed down to more match the other specific servos on the market to see if you like that. This could also help with any possible hunting issues. Lastly is travel. This limits the amount the servo will turn left and right, basically like endpoints. Turn down to limit travel or keep at 100 to maintain full factory set travel or even higher if for some reason you need extra travel on one side due to your chassis setup or something. The GYD 550 limit setting may overwrite any of this so don't worry about this setting too much unless you can't get your endpoints set far enough even with the limit setting on the gyro maxed out. You can adjust the travel all the way down to 50 and all the way up to 149.6. So now with that brief explanation of each setting, I'm gonna reset my whole servo. And we're gonna go drive this thing and I'm gonna walk you through some tuning that I'm gonna be doing to get it drivable again. And at the very end, I'll post up a base setting for the Futaba servo and gyro that will hopefully give you a good starting point. All right, ready to go. Good? Yeah. All right, so I have my servo reset. These are the factory settings. I have the gyro on a base setting that I'll share at the end of the video. So I'm just gonna start driving and then we can take a look at the car and see how it's performing. So we can already see a little bit of shaking in the, the front end. Overall, the drivability is not that bad, but obviously we want to get rid of that uh, hunting. So I'll pull over here and we'll start making some adjustments. So, like I said before, right now, we'll just start by turning the damper up and see if this helps. We'll start maybe at about 120 up from 75. So 120 on the damper, everything else is the same. So I might be a little bit better, but I can definitely tell it's still shaking a little bit. So the next thing I wanted to do was just take off the boost. Like I said, I don't really run the, the boost setting turn to anything on my end. So we'll try that. Yeah, there still seems to be a little bit of taking in the front wheels. So, we'll try turning the damper up a little bit more. We'll try maybe 180. It's a big jump, but if this doesn't work, we'll probably have to try something else. The structure is already pretty low. Yeah, I can already see some shaking in the front right there at takeoff. And especially with that chicane, it's really prevalent if your servo has hunting. Any of the real high speed transitions, it'll shake. So 
Okay. We'll try one more thing before I try to just switch it to SR mode. We'll lower the stretcher to about 1.25 and see if that helps. Yeah, see, I can still see some shaking in the chicane right there. The drivability is not bad, but my main goal when tuning servos first is to get rid of any hunting, and then I can work on the driving feel after that. So we definitely want to try something different with this to get rid of the hunting. Okay, so I'm just going to unplug my servo here, and then I'm going to try switching everything to SR mode. We'll just try it on this SR Type 1. And then I'm just going to try it with the, the base SR settings to see how it is. And I'll go change my gyro mode. All right, we'll go put it back on the track. So this is just with the base SR settings. I didn't change anything in the gyro, so we'll see how it is. Yeah, already you can see in the front wheels there's a lot less shaking. Might be a little bit glitchy, but overall, like the hunting for the most part is pretty much gone. So now we can maybe just work on the drivability. I'm just going to do what I would normally do on my servo settings. Just going to turn the boost off again. We'll try that first. So now it just looks like there's a hair a bit more hunting but the damper setting is pretty low, so I'll adjust that. So we're starting at 48. I'll go up to maybe 120 again, and we'll see. Feels okay. Looking at these settings right now, I'm gonna bump the stretcher down one to two, and then we'll try that.
Okay, this feels pretty good. I just maybe want to up the damper a little bit, slow down the servo a little bit more, get a little bit better transition speed. So we're at 120. I'll go to 150 and see. So that's a pretty good baseline to start there. Um, keep in mind, I'm only adjusting the servo settings. To really perfect your setup, you're probably gonna wanna change servo and gyro settings in conjunction with each other. Here's the baseline setting I'm providing you with for the gyro and servo. The servo settings are basically what I adjusted it to in this video. Use these settings with a grain of salt though because each electronic component can behave differently even if it's the same stuff with the same settings and this is just a base to get you started with so take it and adjust it where you need to and see fit for your personal driving preferences. And that about wraps it up for this video. I hope I could help teach you a little bit more about messing with the Futaba stuff today. If you like the information I provided you with and found it helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future content and I'll see you guys in the next one.